Hey everyone from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I am here one day longer than I expected because I missed my flight. Yeah. So I was supposed to be home by now, but I'm not. <laughs> so I'm in Brazil one day longer. Poor me. I know it's a tough life. Um, so I won't get into any complaints about how much I miss my kids and want to be with them right now, but um, I absolutely wanted to come on here and talk about the trip a little bit. Um, if you really want to, for those of who are on my team, because there are people who are not on my team in this um, journey with us, and we welcome you, and we are so glad you're here. But um, for those of you who are on my team, go, hop on over to the Holistic Healthy O Tribe and check out my last video because it talks about some new oils that we're looking at right now. And um, uh, if you're really interested and you're not on my team, just send me a private message and I'll, I'll maybe share a few secrets, maybe. Um, but all that said is one of the conversations that I had had with Zia, everyone maybe knows Zia Nix and she's just amazing and she's just like this quiet queen and strong and like silent but very powerful and I absolutely adore this woman and one of the things that she had said just totally spoke to me and I was just like wow like well said and I wanted to share it with you today and so here it goes you want to be a philanthropist join doTERRA one of the things that she was contemplating recently was, you know, <clears throat> doTERRA is amazing, the business is amazing, but I'm so grateful to be on this trip right now. And the reason why was because she said to me, you know, I had contemplated, what does it mean to be, um, like, I, in her heart, she wanted to be a philanthropist. And the, a philanthropist, basic meaning, is the love of humanity. And... She said, this trip has solidified the fact, and this is a fact, that you want to be a philanthropist, you join doTERRA. You do doTERRA as a business. We think, you know, we, we come into this and, and we have all of these apprehensions, we have all of this skepticism, and we're like, oh, it's a network marketing company, so therefore it's just greedy and it's bad and it's, you know, it's, it, people don't love it. And you know, as, as a beginner, if you're here and you're a newbie, you may not have that belief yet that this is the best thing in the world to do. And I, I, I'm telling you this, I have met thousands of people and no matter what somebody says to me, no matter how many times they tell me they love their job, every time they succeed in doTERRA, they realize that their job had nothing on the life and the love that doTERRA can give us. Hi, Troy. <laughs> So this is something that I'm really passionate about and I, I just wanted to come in here and talk a little bit about that because you need to know whether you're a newbie, whether you've been doing this for a long time, whether you have succeeded in finances or whether you've succeeded spiritually and personally, you, have, you are here and you're staying with it for a reason and you may not even know that reason and I promise you it's because there's something that's calling you that you can't shake. And it's the idea that we are a part of something that loves humanity. It serves humanity at its deepest core. And we can't, we can't even touch that. You have no idea. If you just spend one minute with Emily Wright and hear any of the stories that she has with the way that doTERRA is doing things, it's so different. It's so believable. It's so tangible. And when she talks and you listen, you know that it's truth. And you know, I've been on a Healing Hands trip now. I've been on a Co-Impact Sourcing trip now. What she is telling us is the truth. There are essential oil companies out there, and then there's doTERRA. There are network marketing companies out there, and then there's doTERRA. I haven't heard of one other company that's doing it in the way that doTERRA is doing it. So let's just talk about what is happening here for a second. doTERRA can source copaiba, cardamom. Um, they can source whatever essential oils that all the perfume industries are trying to get in touch with, right? And they can do it in a way like, so as an example, a perfume industry will come in and they will just say, I want your oil. 
They won't ask, how are you doing? At least not that I've heard. They won't ask, how's your family? They won't ask, how's your village? They won't look to, you know, the, doTERRA's doing it the hard way. You know, sometimes we're wondering, like, why are things so slow? You know, when, some, when you don't get answers right away or when things don't shift right away or, you know, this or that or, you know, sometimes we have these questions and the answer is because there's seven different owners. And the beautiful part of that is that if there was only one owner, that one owner would probably go, you know what, this is too hard. It's too difficult. They've got six other people to say, we have to stand course we have to stay on course we have to stand our ground we have to we have to push through the walls that are coming up against us and I promise you there is a lot of walls there is a lot of people out there that we want to impact in doTERRA that they just don't trust they don't trust the government because the government has gone in there and they've given them false promises and so then we come in there and we give them promises and what do you think they're gonna say about those promises they're gonna say no and when we ask them, how are you doing? And they're like, we need money, we're starving. We don't have enough money to build our homes safely. We don't have enough money to teach our children the way that we need to. We don't have enough, we don't have enough, we don't have enough. And we come in there and we say, we don't wanna just give you money because that's not serving humanity. That's not a philanthropist. That's not what a philanthropist does. A philanthropist does not just throw money at people. What somebody who loves humanity does is invests into the people of the village and the villages that we are serving here in the Amazon rainforest. And we are saying to them, we want to give you a sense of pride of ownership. We want to help you help yourselves and help your people. And so we want you to go and we want you to source the Copaiba. We can get it from wherever. We, can, we know where to get Copaiba. Guys, we know, like we're not dumb in this company. <laughs> what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to say, we want you to take your village, to teach your people, to go and source these beautiful trees of the Amazon rainforest. And we will come once a week and we will collect the resin from the trees that you collect and we will bring it to the distillery for you. We will give you the money that you need for your people. That is a philanthropist. When you buy Copaiba, you are investing into the people of the Amazon rainforest. Make no mistake. This is not a joke, you guys. This is serious. When, we, when you get to come on these kinds of trips and you get to see the, the eyes light up in these people that we are sourcing from and we hear the stories of how doTERRA has changed their people, you know you are a part of something far more clearly than just essential oils. And we know essential oils are amazing. You know it. I know it. We all know it. But it's so much more. It's so much more. And when you share this in your business, you are exploding what we're doing for the villages of the people of the Amazon rainforest. This is one of the most exciting times. We are doing things differently in doTERRA than any other company before us, than any other company. So you need to know this. I have seen it with my own eyes. I have heard the people with my own ears. I have touched the trees of the Copaiba and I know this is real. And you need to hear that from me. And so you wanna be a philanthropist, you wanna be a missionary. You don't need to be in the rainforest to be a missionary. This is one way that you can, you can touch the people of the world in, in a way that says, because if nobody bought the Copaiba, these villages would be in the exact same position. And we could go, again, let me just reiterate, we can go and find Copaiba in a different way, an easier way. That's not our way in doTERRA. Our way is not to make it easy. Our way is to make it so that these people have a profound difference so that the co-impact sourcing that we are committed to is real. So that's all I have to say, you guys. And um, I'll see you later because I've got a few more messages in my heart to give. Ciao.